Hello, everyone, and good afternoon from a sunny day in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm testing uh, on my laptop a microphone that I normally would use on my, on my phone. It's called a Boya. So let me know if you have any problems hearing me. Yeah, let me know if there are any problems at all hearing what I'm saying. I need somebody to just tell me, hey, uh, I can't hear you, or hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. So let's see. I sound great. Thank you. Because what's interesting is I can't hear it from the other side. So I'm going to see what happens when I have a guest that pops in. I was in a situation where someone asked me a little bit about how I got where I am. Now I'm no place extraordinary. I'm just farther along the food chain and up the ladder than where I was born would have you believe. I, how I managed to pull it off, because I tell people there is no magic. So I shared how I did, and I, some of you might remember, I did a post called uh, Corporate Whore Before Entrepreneur. For the record, those of you who are watching right now, make sure you click the subscribe button and the thumbs up and the bell and all that. This channel has grown tremendously, and I'm glad that a lot of the things that I share have helped you. And if you haven't, share this with somebody. If you're already a subscriber, I want you to share it on your Instagram or your WhatsApp or your, or your Facebook, something like that. I'm going to show you a post I did called Corporate Whore Before Entrepreneur. Let's see here. The reason I want to talk about that is the conversation went this way. I worked, I was what they would call wealth adjacent. I was a financial professional for nine years, uh, 10 years total selling, things like that. And I worked with people who were very economically stable. The reason I say that instead of, instead of rich is rich is just the person that who has more than you do. That's all. Poor is just a person who has less than you do. But what I can say is when they got to a situation where they could consistently save more than 10% of their income every month, uh, where they could consistently not worry about where their next meal was going to come from, where they could not worry about the things that everyday life had to offer, well, that's something a lot of Americans don't get to have. So what do we do? If you're not born into that situation, I put myself wealth adjacent and check this out here's the thing corporate whore before entrepreneur i want you to to take a chance to take a few minutes out of your day half an hour and read that what i said is that working for other people working for people who were economically stable gave me a situation where by bringing them things like mutual funds um life insurance things that people hear about but don't really know about that everyone who's ever become economically stable inside the system of capitalism has capitalized on. Well, well, that's what I did. And in return, I got to find out from them directly. People who looked at me and said, hey, you've really got your shit together. I'm going to share some things with you that I don't share with most people because most people will just become resentful of the fact that it's hard work. So here's where we are. I was told that I was no more than a servant of the rich. I was told that I got where I am just by just because I worked for people that had money. By the way, life insurance lies. Uh, I went with Michael Darko. Please watch that video. If you're not someone who understands life insurance, watch that video. Hopefully we'll give you some more questions you can ask us. Uh, if you have life insurance, watch it anyway. Uh, you don't get to become financially successful or, here's a crazy word, create generational wealth without it. Nobody's going to tell you about it. I was told that because I worked with rich people, I got to have things. And I said that's absolutely right. But the one thing that they never gave me, you see, they never gave me any money. They never gave me seed capital. They never, 
they never put me in a situation to give me anything except information and wisdom. See, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is that wisdom comes with experience. So I had the knowledge of how money was put away. They showed me the wisdom of where to put it. First thing they taught me, put it in yourself. Put it in yourself. Learn things that you don't have to necessarily know, but you might know later. The work of other people who want to get where you are. And absolutely, I tell people all the time, this world has very often a pimp hole relationship. I hoard my ass out consistently for years in the American economic system to purchase my own freedom very early in life. I'm a little emotional right now because the person who came to me, you know, when your time starts to become equivalent to money, which for successful people it is, I, I was paying them to give them information for free that they then turned around and said wasn't worth it because they didn't really catch on. By the way, uh, Uncle Ladrunius, can you tell me if my sound is still good? Just anybody listening, give me a thumbs up if my sound is still good. As I said, this is a microphone that I normally use on a different device. Anybody, anybody out there, let's see. Okay, okay, I'm getting a couple people saying the sound is good, and I appreciate that. So where I am right now is because, because what they said was an insult, what I wanted to do was see if there was any merit in it. I wanted to see, okay, well, could there be some, you know, if you insult me by saying what, well, you're not very handsome. Well, that's a subjective question. I, I would like to believe that I am, but I'd step back and say, is it worth it to be angry at someone for saying that? I have a great life. I, I have this luxurious mustache. I like looking at me in the mirror. Someone could say, well, Watif, well, you're not very strong. And, and I would say to them, well, you know, that's, that's objective. I'm stronger than I was last year this time. I'm stronger than I was the year before that this time. And for those who don't know, I, I love lifting weights. And my, my weekend love is my, are my kettlebell. No, is my kettlebell because I only have one. I don't have a set yet. I encourage everyone. Let me go to, actually, let me show you guys something. If anybody here wants to catch me on Instagram, that's where I like to throw my kettlebell pictures. Yay. But when someone said, well, you are no more than a slave to the rich, when I got back to that, that insult, you were a slave to the rich. We live in a caste system. A lot of people hear the caste system and they, they automatically think of people from the continent of India. The caste system is one that says, well, you can't be born. Let's see, I'm going to try and look that up for you. You can't be born in one station in life economically and grow any higher. Uh, well, well, that's necessarily true because generally speaking, people can't rise any higher than their economic surroundings. I'm gonna show you as an oversimplified diagram, an oversimplified diagram, so that people don't think I'm making a literal translation of what the case system looks like in India to give you, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about in the United States. At the bottom are the Dalits, the outcasts, the street sweepers, the latrine or toilet cleaners in India. Above them are the shudras, the laborers, the workers. Above them are the vaishas, farmers, traders, merchants. Above them are the, and I'm pronouncing all of these incorrectly, are the uh, kshatriyas, warriors and rulers. And if any of my friends from India who, who speak any of the many native dialects want to come on and help me with this, I'd appreciate that. Get the word out to your friend. And the brahmins, who are the priests and the teachers. Generally, those who are born into a case will never go up. You are not allowed to go up. You are not allowed to have a job where you can, and I mean, this is institutionalized. No matter how smart you, what you get, you can't move up in the system. You can't move up economically, and you certainly can't move up to a higher class of people. And yes, I, I said higher class. Be mad if you, oh, well, yes. a lot of people have not sat back and thought about what freedom means. Your conversation would have should have started with a definition of freedom. Challenge accepted, Uncle. Here's what freedom means to me. I'm not rich, but I know I can save a certain percentage of my net worth every month. 
Uh, freedom means I only work for myself. I don't have an employer. If I have a good month, it's because I went out there and I hustled my ass off for my clients. If I have a bad month, well, maybe I didn't do enough hustling last month to get clients up for this month. Freedom means I can have a YouTube channel where I express some socially and politically divisive views without fear of repercussion because I am the HR department. I am the department that's going to chastise Yusef Watif if he, sa if he says something off the chain. Freedom means I can, here's, here's what freedom is, Uncle Ladunius. Here's, here's what freedom is, ready? I am perfectly capable of accepting and not complaining about the consequences of my behavior because none of those consequences will result in my not being able to provide for myself. That's freedom. We live in a patriarchal society worldwide where to move up, you need connections and wealth. You have to accept the world we live in, period. Amen. Oh, look who has joined the fray. Phyllis. But I don't have you any not, sound. You, you can't hear me. You can't hear me? I can't hear you huh. yet. Hold on. Hit some more buttons. All right, people in the chat. There we I'm go. I'm going to press a button on my microphone. I want anyone to tell me. Hold on. So. Can you back? Okay. I can hear so you. Can you hear What me? I had to do is I had to unplug uh, this Boya. And for the people that want to know, the Boya don't pay me anything for advertising it. This is a great microphone if you do things off of your, uh, if you're, if you're doing yeah. things off your cell phone. So BK from the Rockies just said, we live in a hierarchical society worldwide. In order to move up, you need connections and wealth. You have to accept the world we live in, period. I would say yes, but due to things like the internet. Wealth is a widely interpretable thing. If you can just get past the point where you have to worry about next month's food, you can invest a little time into yourself to move ahead. As far as connection goes, there are no more gatekeepers. I have connected with people who are able to find me directly and say, I want to do business with you. I want to hire you and your editing, copy editing, proofreading company. And you know what? Before we even get to Phyllis, I always got to tell people, YouTube doesn't pay me. Google doesn't pay me. I don't get a paycheck. I have my own business. I'm an editor, copy editor, proofreader. If you have a resume that needs to be written, if you have a book that needs to be edited to university level English, that's what people come to me for. That's what I do. I'll even show you guys. Let's see. Uh oh. Let's see. Hold on. Can't find that. Phyllis. Talk. Hey, okay. darling. How are you doing? Okay. So, you've been listening. You know. <laughs> I always go, uh, we're looking at the, the leaves on the tree. Take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Of what do you want out of all of this? Because that'll direct your path and your choices and your happiness in your choices. Um, and there's a lot more to look at these days other than six financial emotional, sexual, you know, physical health. There's a state of the world. There is what it we goals we set. You know, I like to say, what are they gonna say about me when I did? <laughs> Wait a minute, dear 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 friend. Mm -hmm. You said there's more to this life than the physical, the sexual, and the financial. If you don't have those things already taken care of, you can't think about the other freedoms and how the world is going. Most of the people that are right That's now are people that are born where I was born. They're still on the grind. Some of them are farther up the food chain than others, but I can't stand here and tell anybody watching to not worry about that kind of stuff. Money is freedom. Money is my favorite subject because money is how I earn the freedom to be able to have conversations like this with you in the middle of the day. But you have to, we have to worry about those things. We have to know how the hustle works. 
And you actually Ooh. said well, as well. Everybody. You're making you're making choices on how to believe based on your cultural experience, which is what anyone else is expected to do. But you and I know when you make a change culturally, culturally, you learn other options. And it is narrow minded, in my opinion, to only focus on I got to make the money first before A, B and C. It is a narrow focus of how you will get there based on how I was raised. I got to hustle. But we know there's other ways of living. I, I lived on the farm. I just read a guy's book title when he, uh, about living without money. And, and I put it in my group, Owning Masculinity. And, be, and the point of his book, now he's a writer. This guy's, however, the key ingredient of his life was he could do that because he had had childhood experience living in the wilderness. He knew how to take care of himself without money. And living abroad, when you live in other countries, when, uh, you know, I came from Thailand to Ecuador, and when you land and work is not the priority how people make money. They are generational farmers. We are not those people. But you know there's other ways of being. Let me ask you a question. You right now, you're living in what country? Ecuador. I'm in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. We, you and I have lived all over the world. By the way, everybody go to her website. The stuff she writes, the stuff she thinks about, if you think talking to her can be kind of intense, I want you to make sure you go to her website and look at some of her other books and things that she's done. Uh, she's awesome. She's someone I've known for many moons. I have a great deal of love and respect for her. I do. Here's where we are, though. You and I, due to having already done the hard work, can talk about crazy issues and, and the world is more than this or that. You've got to get there first. And I would argue that because despite what you may look like to people with an untrained eye, you're not just some hippie that wanders the world spreading peace and happiness. You are a formally educated woman who left a lucrative career because you were able to learn how the game worked, take it to your advantage, and then use it to finance your own financial independence, not saying rich, but your own financial independence, and see the world. Is that a, that an untrue statement? Same, same, but different, as we say. Yes. You got to learn the rules before you break the rules. And no, okay. we agree totally with that. But then you go, but you don't have to stay in the paradigm of you got to work hard to be successful. That's where I'm kind of like, no, there's other ways of doing this. You know, and, and as Maya Angelou has told us, when you learn more, when you know better, you do better. And, uh, you know, it, it's a, such a relief for our people in particular when they get to that mindset of, oh, I don't have to work 60 hours a week to enjoy my life anymore. And Thailand has been the one game changer, I think, for a lot of us to go, oh, there's other ways of, you mean I can pursue my art? You mean I can relax and not have to grind continuously? Yeah, there are. And even more importantly, What's the there thing? I don't know if you can get to the point where you don't have to grind continuously without grinding continuously first. There is no way to go from point A to point C without traveling the distance in between unless someone has developed a new star drive I don't know about. For people like us who were born black in America, yeah. arguably one of the top three racist countries in the world towards anyone of color, be you native Indian or otherwise, I don't know of any other way to get out other than deciding life is gonna be hard. I'd rather have a whole lot of hard short, nasty in the beginning, so the rest of my life I don't have to. Well, look at BK from the Rockies. Because when it comes to living without stress, FIRE, which is an acronym that I've heard many times, it stands for Financial, Independent, Retire Early, Movement on, on This Hard. You retire with enough wealth and health to live happily and stress-free. He goes on to say, in the FIRE movement, people are trying to, aren't trying to acquire higher statuses as much as they are looking for financial freedom and autonomy. I've heard of the FIRE movement. I, 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 I've heard some of its principles. To me, it just sounded like a, a very Hollywood version of 
don't use credit, which people get mad. I talk about stay away from credit cards all the time. Only buy what you can afford at the time. If there's more to it, let, let me do this. Let me formally put out here on the yard. Um, will you join me to tell us more about F-I-R-E on another show? And <laughs> of course he will. <laughs> Hey, so I, I'm more from the prepper community. You better have more than a bank account as your uh, feeling of security. You better learn how to make your own food, shelter, and protect yourself. Because in the new, I mean, we have health, weather. We won't even worry about war. That's, a, that's another wild card. And if you're not prepared for that, then you kind of, you know, it's, it's a good life until it's not. And if it's not yep. built on something else, and our futures are dim and difficult ahead. And if you're not prepared, then this is all masturbatory fantasy. It's all kind of like rearranging the deck chairs while you still got them. And I'm like, well, let's prepare for the future, the next future. It's, and yes, it can be gold. Yes, it can be crypto. Yes, it can be Bitcoin. But it better be food. It better be people you can trust. It better be Robert that. Craig and I had a great conversation called Storm Prepper. Uh, if any of you guys want to go back and watch that, if, if, if you want to talk about being a prepper, that's definitely something you want to check out. But the other thing is what you said, you're right. Prepping is the other side of the coin. But the, but the side of the coin that most people have to get past first, and it took me a while to realize that being a prepper may be a privileged position for most to have the mental capacity, <laughs> credit card hell, uh, that was one that did not go as I thought it would. I did a chat called credit card hell, and I had to have Maurice come in. My buddy Mo came in to save me because people were jumping on my ass about how credit cards are evil, but that's another conversation for another day. Yeah, I don't even live in that world anymore. No. I try to get it. I, 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 my financial American expat experience basically cost me 30% on average to move money. And it is kind of one of those, that's the price of being in the old system. And if you have not adjusted your life to another system, okay. <laughs> you know, so I don't try to play in that system. You got to change your world. There is a future happening now. And if you're not in that game, then you're still grinding in the old game. And I'm like, uh, uh, trade's going. You know, we're, but here's going the thing. Can, we, can you and I agree that part of the grind that was necessary then and necessary now, <clears throat> if you are not born into a privileged or wealthy class, is to become wealth adjacent, learn what they did to either achieve or just maintain what they have so that we can get out of the system that it may no. take selling your ass to corporate America and being a servant of the wealthy no. to get out. Cause you made one point. You're going back to the past. No. You did that were your words going back and learning from what they did. That's a waste of time. You're going back to old paradigms and old models. I'm saying there's a new economy coming. And if you're not paying attention to that, you're wasting your time. You're trying to make it in America. Or, fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oop, did I say that in public? He looks around. You in the library? Where are you at? <laughs> I'm like, no, don't worry. No. I'm in the shopping mall. But, here, but here's where we're yeah. going to go with that. You say make it in America. Fuck that shit. I would actually tell people visit other countries, but first become successful in America. To some degree, we can discuss success later the problem is if you this is not even a problem this is an advantage if you have learned how to become successful in the united states to any degree there's no other place as aggressive or gritty anywhere in the world you can go anywhere on this planet and be financially stable if you can pull it off in america you know how they say if you can pull it off in new york city you can be pulled off anywhere you can be successful anywhere if you're successful in the united states no i disagree 
China, Brother Craig, China. I'm glad you're able to intellectualize the comment, meaning my thesis statement. I'm not sure the person's intent, but you have to partake in a system big. You choose to benefit from it, okay? And and Uncle Adunia is trying to cut the middle. He said, Yusuf says, learn the corporate game. Phyllis says, learn some skills. Are you both kind of saying the same thing? Are, are, are we saying the same thing? Uh, different things. Same, same, but different. Does they say in Thailand? Yes, yeah, same, same, but different. Different skills. I don't think their corporate skills are um, valuable anymore. And I have been saying that for years. I have also said, don't go and get a college degree. It is debt you cannot ever repay back. It is, a, it is designed to pull you down and foolish. And, but I've been a headhunter. I'm a career coach. This is what I've looked at for the last few years. Looked at economy, economics. Corporations only last 22 years. You can't build on that. But, but, but folks, you just said you're a corporate headhunter and a career coach. Are you not milking from the same tip I am? Understanding no. how to make money in the corporate Western no. way. Finance exactly. Don't go back to corporate Western way. Well, what you that. just said, you just said what you did. I came I, from I, that. Exactly. Exactly. I came from it. Anybody and else I'm saying, with me? Don't Anybody do that. Me? No, this is, let me give you my classic example. Buggy whip makers were number one business in America in 1898. Number one. Everybody wanted to be a buggy whip maker. Fine, die. But guess what? Somebody invented this thing called a car. And it ruined their industry, but you couldn't tell them anything. And that's what's happening again when you say corporate. If you don't have the new paradigm for creating industry, circle, economy, then you are off. You're still burning fossil fuel. That's what I'm the only thing I'm, and everything else we agree. No more fossil fuels. Change. And it's about food and a lot simpler life. A lot simpler life. But I'm a futurist. That's what I look at. Go ahead. Okay, so I'll put it to you this way. Here, here's okay. where I am. If you're not willing to endorse my become wealth adjacent and learn how they did it, when the young men who come to me and contract with me to do everything from mentorship to just a few hours on a Saturday to help coach them through some things, what would you tell those young men? What would you say that's going to give them as consistent? I didn't say fun. I didn't even necessarily say good. Because my way, as is most of the ways I do things, are hard, they are grinding, but they are proven results. Nobody likes squatting. Everybody likes the squat rack results. I don't like getting under the bench press and putting weight always slightly heavier than I can manage on it. But I like what I get Fine. afterwards. So when I give these young men that advice, exactly. what, what would you replace that with? Yeah. Uh, do the hard thing, do something creative, because that's what's really going to matter in the end. Now, you want to work for, you want to, a job is simply doing creative for somebody else. Do it for yourself. Because in my experience, in my corporate game and playing, I go, I got to make the money I want, and then what did I want to do? Create. So I said, wait, I could have done that, all of the creating from day one, but I put it off to create for somebody else's, fulfill someone else's dream, grind for somebody else's dream. So I'd say, skip the feckle, skip the middle life, skip that, that you got to do it for someone else first. But wait a minute. Do it for you yourself. Here's the thing. You say skip the middle line. You can't cheat the game. The long term results come from realizing you can't cheat it. You have to learn all those things in the middle if you want it to work over the long term. Because if, this, like, if you believe back, that to be true, it is true. Yes. I have learned differently. Okay. It sounds like Phyllis left the corporate world and does not want to return. That's respectable. But, comma, she probably learned some skills from the corporate world, though she may not acknowledge it. Is that a fair statement? I acknowledge them. I, I got three degrees. I'm like, fuck yeah, I've learned a lot. 
Craig, I, I want I want I want you to expand on this if you get the chance to type something in for me. Unless you come from a legacy of strong business and ownership, one follows the path as laid out by cultural directives. I came from regular ass blue collar grunt level America, right? The path that was laid out for me wasn't going to get me where I am. So I had to realize because where I wanted to go wasn't going to be where I was from, I had to get around people who did do the right thing, who are all those things. Whoever remembers that old movie, Wall Street, most of the people who taught me were greedy. Most of the people who taught me were money hungry. <laughs> and most of them got to the point where I got earlier than I did, where they could just say, hey, I don't have to work for anybody else anymore, even if the person they worked for before was their own family. Let's see, Kenna, corporate skills can still be valuable, maybe in different forms. I still use my project program management skills, and I don't even work for anyone anymore except myself. And Same Kenna thing. Ones, you know, dear sister Kenna has been a guest. She'll be back on again soon. She's someone who is constantly traveling the world. I'm with that statement. Again, Uncle Lee, you have to learn the skill first. Kenna Williams, exactly. Well, this is BK talking to Kenna. Hell, the amount of skills and resources like software and connections that I've picked up and I use all the time. BK from the Rockies, yeah, yeah. You know, all those skills that I learned about how to not just be good at something, but good enough at it to learn how to show it to people. I learned all that working in the investment business. How to manage a Rolodex, that's an old word. How to manage my client list, how to schedule, how to bring people into a business, internal, all that stuff that facilitated it. Exactly, became a rocket that still used skills my former job paid me to learn. And that's the thing. I'm not saying that you necessarily have to like the, the thing that you do for your company, but it's all those peripherals. How do I deal with how do I deal with money? How many people realize that I worked with so yeah. many other small business owners who were artists, a lot of them were artists, who didn't know you needed a separate bank account to put your money in when you earn? Small things like that that you can't I'm, get I'm agreeing with you. Now, I come from a generation and coming from El Paso, Texas, as a headhunter, executive recruiter, working with guys getting out of the army. 20, 30 years, 10 years, whatever. And, and they had that same, how do we shift from one belief system of how the world works, the military, great training, but to the next phase of their life? How do you make those shifts? And so when I'm constantly looking at, or you know, guys that work for an oil company or one corporation or another, because they get this mentality of the corporation, there's a downside to that. And, and that corporate grind is how, you know, it has politics in it. That's the piece of it that it's the unspoken game of the corporation. That is the unlearned, un, unresumed skill, if I can put it that way, that can be a hindrance to you. And it is, to me, more valuable when I, as a headhunter, looked at resumes coming in, instead of I got one guy that's got one way of thinking, and, and I'm going to put him in a whole other way of thinking, or work worse, he may have to work for women, he may have to work for minorities, may work and people younger than him. And I'm like, that's a disaster waiting to happen. And I'm like, so I kind of go, eh, corporate, because it's a, it's a mentality. It's a box you put in. So diversity now, and on the flip side of that, if you're moving every six months, eight months, can't keep a job, that was a, a you know, because you can't stick you in the box. But I go, but if you can create and you can problem solve and you can tell me you can, and you can communicate, you can do that. Those are skills that I don't care where they come from, right? I, I can look at the, we can look at the Bill Gates who dropped out of school at university in New Mexico and because he couldn't get the bank loans out of El Paso or New Mexico. And his daddy said, come home, I'll give you the money. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, these are the dropout guys that made their money and their success. So da, 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 they didn't play the game. They had to figure it out. And that's still harder. As you know, as an entrepreneur, it takes constant, focus, focus, focus.
you're just focusing on your own business instead of someone else's. You're learning on your own mistakes instead of somebody else's dime. It's convenient, but it slows you down. It slows you down. You, you don't get the highs of success. You get a pat on the back. And I'm like, eh. And artists in particular know this and live this. And you do your art when you're in the gym first because you're doing what you love. But that's why they call me the Oracle. <laughs> Go, baby. Or I'll read. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess that's why I love you so much. We'll have to agree to disagree. <laughs> Um, you have a generational difference. Before I go, I always want to tell people to check out Boom, Canna Williams LLC, because she's awesome and she goes all over the world. Hey, PK, thank you. But we are all on the same page. We are all in the same class, Black educated, Black intellectuals. So now it is our choices. What do we do with our time, our intellect, our options? How do we encourage one another? And I say, take a shortcut. Take, take as many shortcuts as you can. That's why I love Cliff Notes. <laughs> like, let, let, leave the country. Get your passport. Go. Put your money in. Get some crypto. Go. And you tell them that daily. No, what I, I, listen, here's the thing. I'm saying go, but it's kind of like what I said in How to Leave America 101. Don't just jump mm. out the window. You okay. can't just decide today <laughs> that, I have, yeah. um, that I have the skills necessary. You know, you've got to you've got to put on the armor. The corporate armor, the money armor, however you want to phrase that. You've got to know what you're doing awesome. because when you get there, you're not still in the same grind in a different country. Yes. Yeah. You have to create your own. 101 and 102. Go look at those videos. People who are like, listen, I want to just jump out the window right now and go. I'm telling you, you can't. There may be some things you have to do ahead of time to set, your up, set yourself up for the long-term win. Yes, definitely. I got a 101 back there somewhere, too. You are fast on that. <laughs> oh, I'm just using two fingers and a mouse pad. <laughs> two fingers and a mouse pad. That's about it. I'm just on the couch. I, I went, you know, how, how great is it, though, to be at a level of technology where you and I can just jump on, share some of our accumulated wisdom, and, and do it quickly and efficiently, and then and leave again and be able to tell people, hey, I, I just think about just in the time, you know, in, in the generations that you and I have known each other, how far have things come? You uh, know, the wisdom that I knew you had then when I first met you, you're now able to disseminate all over the world. Yeah. And, and I choose, it's interesting how that has even shifted for me. The opportunity to share is abundant. And social media is kind of foaming at the mouth. Um, and at the same time, there's a need to go inward and take care of yourself first and uh, make sure whatever you're focusing on matters to you most of all. Because there's a lot of distraction. Yeah. A lot. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I, right. think that, uh, I think that BK from the Rockies gave us a good sign-off point. What he said was, uh, once you leave those political arenas, you don't have to deal with those problems, but you pick up a bunch uh -huh. of skills for leaving those arenas uh, that make life easier as you move on. I think that's a that's a pleasant way to to sign stay. off. Um, say stay out of politics. <laughs> you got any propaganda you want to add before before we go? Owning masculinity is uh, my next book. It is looking at the addressing the sexual abuse of the masculine under patriarchy and what do we do about it and uh, for the future. And 
rule the world. That's what my next plans are. Got another book in the works for women and uh, healing from sexual lies, period. Forget the trauma. Everybody get trauma, but the lies is what stick. So did that's you say, what did you say the lies? Lies, sexual lies. Lies about our sexuality and who we are. Mm. You know what? I... I want to. I want to get on on that. We need to have a chat about that because there are some things that. That's yeah. Yes, we definitely have to. I yeah. We got to talk about. Oh, Kenna, you know what? You know, Kenna just said thank you, and I always want to say thank you, Kenna. You're one of the people that I'm. Yeah. I, I just. I just love to have in my life. Such, such a, a good and positive personality that no one has ever said an ill word about. So I'm glad to have you in the circle. Um, <laughs> and as we leave, I'm going to tell everybody to make sure you go. To her modern oracle YouTube channel. Oh yeah, I forgot about yeah yeah. Building that up again. Oh my God! When are you gonna so to your channel? Say again. When am I gonna what? When are you gonna bring me on your channel? <gasps> when I get my voice back. That's why I've been working on my okay. book. I've I've had some. I haven't done anything at all because of the voice has been. Uh, needing to come back. So, yes. So I've been writing. Well, listen. Love you. Love you all. Kenna, you are going to have to, you and BK are going to come on together and we're going to talk about what he means by grad school and the politics. I'm glad we left on a cliffhanger. Everybody have a great day wherever you are. Love you all. Bye-bye. I know.